Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our live webinar on XAP fire testing. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box on the right-hand side, and we'll be answering these questions at the end of the presentation. I'm Tim Halls. I'm the National Sales Manager for Seeker's New Build Roofing Team, and I'm going to be one of the presenters today. Before we start the presentation, I want you to see the agenda for today. The webinar should take no longer than 45 minutes, and there will be 15 minutes at the end for question and answers. As a business, we're fully committed to ensure that when using our roofing systems, you can be sure that you are satisfying the requirements of the building regulations. This will be made possible by an extensive and market-leading test program. We've been told we have the largest body of fire tests in the industry. However, we took the decision very early on to make this as comprehensive as possible, utilizing exact testing and classification. But before we get into the detail of fire testing regulations, I want to provide you with a short introduction to SICA, and then I will leave you in the hands of our in-house specialist, Dean Brady. SICA Limited, the UK subsidiary of the worldwide SICA group, was established in 1927 and produces and markets a wide range of state-of-the-art systems covering construction products, industrial and automotive manufacturing solutions, along with DIY product range. Globally, SICA has subsidiaries in 101 countries around the world and has over 300 production facilities. We have over 27,000 employees and have generated annual sales 7.6 billion pounds in 2021. SICA's purpose is to anticipate and meet future challenges by providing reliable, innovative, sustainable, and long-lasting solutions in the construction, building, and manufacturing industries. In everything we do, we provide a seal of quality, which our employees, customers, and all stakeholders can rely on. Building trust every day. And SICA Roofing comprises of our market-leading brands that you can see on the screen and single-ply membranes, bitumen solutions, and liquid applied membranes. I'll now hand you over to Dean to take you through the rest of the webinar. Thanks, Tim. My name is Dean Grady. I'm the Senior Product Engineer in um, Roofing at Seeker. And what I'm gonna do today is try and throw some light really, if you like, on the sort of dark recesses of fire testing, but also try and explain why XAPs, extended applications, are so important and why we are so invested in um, delivering them. So first up, a little bit about standards and testing, because this is somewhere where people get um, very confused very easily. And to be quite honest, I can see why some of the test standards look very similar when you um, look at how they're written and so on. But um, I'll try and um, make them a little bit easier for everybody to understand. So first up is the National Classification and Test System, BS476 Part 3. Some of you may be familiar with this already. And contrary to sort of popular belief, this is still the National standard. However, it will soon be superseded. So BS476 Part 3 is concerned fundamentally with external fire performance and also limiting the spread of fire. What it's concerned with is the transmission of fire from one roof to another. I was liking it to what might have happened in the Great Fire of, of London, if you like. And apparently that is what actually informed this test standard originally. There are three parts to this test and classification system. And if you look to that image in the top right hand corner, you can see the test rig and a test sample actually being tested. There is a prelim part to it. Basically, a flame will be applied, as in that image, and then the roof system, it's a roof system, so you've got roof waterproofing, you've got insulation, you've got an AVCL, and you've got a structural deck, all put together in a model, 835 millimetres by 835 millimetres, put in this test bed, and then 
basically set alight. So the prelim part, the flame is applied. It needs to go out in five minutes. If it goes out in five minutes, then you automatically get the C of the double letter classification method that's used with this classification system. Then there is a penetration part. Again, a completely new sample is set alight and it has to withstand the heat that's applied with the burners above and the flame that's applied. It's very, very intense. I've watched hundreds of these tests over the years. Um, it cannot burn through to the underside of the structural substrate within an hour. If it does, then you don't get the um, A, which is the first part of the classification system in the double letter method. Then there is a spread of flame part. If you pass the prelim part of this test, you automatically get a C anyway. All of our systems will pass the penetration part quite easily. We'll get the A. Now, sometimes in the spread of flame, set fire to the system, measure the spread. Sometimes we get a, a B, sometimes we get a C. It's not an exact science, in all honesty. And what test standard 1187 recognises is that really that spread of flame part of the test is academic, given that if you pass the prelim part, you automatically get the C. And you'll see as I go into the detail of the classification system, why this is so relevant and important. You can only test flat or 45 degrees. You can't test at 20 degrees or 15 de degrees or, or whatever. So whatever the degree of pitch is for your roof, you can only use a flat test or a 45 degree test. The 45 degree test was really only intended for traditional pitch roofing where they might be using um, pan tiles or slates, um, for example. As I've said, BS476 part three is still current, but it will be superseded probably within the next couple of years. On to test standard 1187 and the classification system of EN135015. This is quite often and incorrectly all called B roof T4. I have lots of conversations with people saying they're interested in B roof T4. They want a system that's B roof T4. Have you tested to B roof T4? You cannot test to B roof T4. B roof T4 is a possible outcome from testing to 1187. This test standard and classification system is very, very similar to BS476 part three with some minor differences. There is no spread of flame part, because as I've said, if you pass the prelim, that part is a little bit academic anyway. There is a penetration part to it. But if you test flat, it's deemed to be applicable up to 10 degrees. You can test sloping at 45 degrees, and that covers everything between 10 and up to 70. As far as the regulations are concerned, anything over 70 degrees is deemed a wall vertical anyway. Then there's the test and classification system of EN135011. Nearly everybody who isn't overly familiar with fire testing and classification, etc., gets EN135011 and EN135015 confused. And I can see why, you know, looking at them, they look very similar. EN135011 is a small flame test and classification system. If you have a product where there's a European norm, so there is a test standard, like there is for our products for waterproofing, insulation, AVCL, for example, within each respective standard for the manufacture of those products, you will have to test those products to EN135011. And basically all you do is you take a bit of it, put it in a small chamber, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, set fire to it, 
see what happens. It gets classified basically, and things are either non combustible or they're combustible to varying degrees. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about the classification under these different standards shortly. But before I do, just a little bit about BS8579. BS8579 is the guide to the design of balconies and terraces. It's not a mandatory standard, it's completely voluntary, but I think it's a very, very good standard and also does go a long way to remove some of the ambiguity and clarify some of the points that are missed with the general regulations. So the classification and testing under EN 13501. Remember, this is taking a bit of the product, setting fire to it, see what happens. There is no direct correlation between EN 135011 and EN 135015. And quite often I will have discussions with people who say they want a roof to EN 135011, they want it to be non-combustible. Well, there's no such thing. If you can remember, EN 135015 is a roof system. EN 135011 is just the individual product. There's no direct correlation between the two whatsoever. So you will take a piece of the product, you'll set fire to it, see what happens. A1 to A2 are non-combustible. Everything else is combustible just to varying degrees using this classification system. EN135011 sorry, EN 135015, sorry, remember, is the classification system using the test results from the test method 1187. B roof T4 isn't the test method. It's a possible outcome from that test. All of our roof systems will be B roof T4. And if you can remember, the reason for this testing is determining how that roof will perform so you can determine how close it can be to surrounding neighbouring buildings. What I've done in this table is I've used the national class under BS476 part 3 and drawn a direct cor um, correlation between that and the European class. So anything that's AA, AB or AC will be the same as B roof T4. And in fact, approved document B says that. Our roof systems will be this. You don't have to worry about where the roof is in relation to the neighbouring buildings. And the Scottish regulations do something similar. There's just some slight differences. They use some different terminology, low vulnerability, medium vulnerability, um, high vulnerability, and um, low vulnerability is six metres. Well, you can see there, six to 24 with medium and, and so on and so forth. So what's happened? What's what's going on? Why is everybody now way more interested in fire testing, fire performance than they were previously? Well, what's caused that change is Dame Judith Hackett's independent review of the building regulations and fire safety generally um, in 2018. This resulted in approximately 53 changes. The roofing market is now far more aware of fire performance and regulatory requirements, testing, etc., than it's ever been. And to my mind, that's a good thing. What the regulations basically say is that evidence has to be provided that a proposed roof system will comply with the requirements of the regulations. There's only really one way you can do this, and that is with certification from a third party body. So let's delve into that a little bit further. What exactly do the regulations say? What they say is that any test evidence used to demonstrate the fire performance or classification of a roof system should be scrutinized to check that it is applicable. Assessments, 
So that's basically somebody offering a view, if you like, should only be carried out where there is sufficient relevant test evidence available. So nobody should be offering a view without there being test evidence to back that up to some degree. And not everybody can offer a view. Where it's proposed to assess the classification of a product or system in lieu of carrying out a specific test. So this is in lieu of carrying out a specific test that matches exactly what's being proposed as in paragraph B1B should be done in accordance with the relevant test standard for extended applications, except for short, for the test in question and should include details of the test evidence that has been used to support the assessment. So what this is basically saying is that there are bodies that can make assessments of how a roof system will perform, but they have to use a test standard to arrive at that assessment, to arrive at that view, and they have to use some physical evidence as well. And that might sound like a little bit of a contradiction. Well, how can you make an assessment, but you need some test evidence to do that as well? The reason for all of this is because there is an almost infinite amount of possible build-ups when it comes to roof systems, just with ours alone. All the different deck types, all the different AVCL types, all the different insulation types, all the different roof finishes, all the different technologies, all the different thicknesses of those products, all of the different thicknesses of insulation, for example, um, tapered insulation, uniform insulation, PIR insulation, mineral insulation, polystyrene insulation. You physically cannot test all of those. Like I said, there's almost an infinite amount of those. Insulation, for example, that goes up in five mil increments from anywhere from 25 mil up to 500 mil and beyond. Also, there are only two test bodies in Europe that conduct that can conduct 1187 testing. That's the BRE in Watford and Warrington Fire, who are based in the UK and in Ghent in Belgium. What we recognised very, very early on is that extended applications, whilst they help test bodies test without having to test every single permutation, they also help us provide the assurance that Tim mentioned early on. We want people to use our roof systems with confidence to know that if they use them, they will easily satisfy the requirements of the, regu of the building regulations. Now, we work almost exclusively with Warrington Fire. We find them very, very easy to work with. They're very responsive and we have an excellent relationship with them. This isn't something that they're just making up. They're just doing off their own back. If you can remember what the regulations say, fundamentally is that you've got to use a combination of standards and physical testing to arrive at any assessment. And the standard that's relevant to 1187 testing is CEN TS 16459 external fire exposure of roofs and roof coverings, extended applications of test results from CENTS 1187, XAPS for short. What this basically does is provide Warrington Fire with the framework, with the guidance that allows them to arrive at that assessment, that allows them to classify roof systems and this is what this is about. This is about satisfying the building regulations with systems. So not having to worry that the particular project that you're involved with, that particular design, isn't going to satisfy the regulations. We wanted to be in a position where we could say to everybody, that doesn't matter. You can do that. That will satisfy the regulations. You're changing the deck. It doesn't matter. 
the insulation thickness has increased or decreased or the insulation type has changed, it doesn't matter. The membrane type has changed because of the guarantee period, it doesn't matter. It's all going to be classified to be roof T4 and satisfy the requirements of the building regulations. I'm really, really pleased to say that we're in a position now where all of our Sonoful PVC roofing systems, when used with PIR insulation, are classified to be roof T4. They can be used with absolute confidence and you don't have to worry about what the actual construction is. And also, we're doing exactly the same with all of our roofing technologies, with every single type of insulation, every thickness, every deck type, etc. What we have found, and it's really not very helpful, is that there are other people in the marketplace who are suggesting they have this. The reality is that unless you have done this testing using that criteria and done that with a recognised test body, and you can provide the evidence with the test reports that your systems are classified to be routine for, you haven't. You haven't done that. Also, that flies in the face of everything that's prescribed by MHCLG, SIBC, LHBC, etc. Only recognised bodies can provide that assessment. We can't do it. None of our competitors can do it. Builders can't do it. Main contractors can't do it. It has to come from somebody like Warrington Fire or the building research establishment. Just a little bit about some of the other changes from um, Dame Judith Hackett's report. Combustible insulation got banned, that's PIR, on certain buildings that are over 18 metres in England and Wales, 11 metres in Scotland. Buildings like residential, student accommodations, halls of residence, etc., care homes, sheltered housing, hospitals, to name but a few. If that building is over 18 metres, you cannot use combustible insulation in certain instances. Generally, this doesn't apply to the roofs, and B roof T4 is the benchmark. Where it applies to what are called attachments and by attachments the regulations mean anything that's stuck on the building if you like that and isn't part of the superstructure so that is balconies for example and it doesn't matter if that first balcony or the only balcony on that building is at three meters if the building is at 18 meters in um, england and wales 11 meters in scotland you cannot use non-combustible insulation on that balcony because what this regulation is all about is limiting fire spread around the external fabric of that building. Also, we get asked a lot for fire tests um, on inverted roof systems. So where the roof is upside down, if you like, the waterproofing is underneath the insulation and then covered with um, stone ballast or paving or, or a green roof. We have done some 1187 and 476 testing with inverted ballasted systems and all you're really trying to do is set fire to something which is non-combustible. It's a pointless uh, exercise really. Now there is a European um, Commission document 2005-33 which basically says that all the EU member states, which we're no longer part of the EU of course, but this um, agreement is still in place have agreed that if the roof system is covered with a non-combustible finish, minimum 50 mil stone or uh, 40 mil um, slabs, or a green roof, it's deemed to satisfy the regulations. And that makes perfect sense, because like I said, fundamentally what you're trying to do is set fire to something which is non-combustible. So I mentioned BS8579 earlier on, and why I think it's such an important standard. As I've said, it's completely voluntary. It's not a mandatory standard. But increasingly, I, are, I am finding that people are, are recognising the benefit of it. 
um, the fact that it does clear up a lot of the grey areas um, which are left with the regulations approved document B and the Scottish Technical Handbook in Scotland. For example, this diagram, it's lifted straight out of there. Really, really um, simple and easy to see what is an attachment. You can see there one and two, for example, attachments over 18 metres. You cannot use combustible insulation on those. But you can see the areas where um, there's that um, cross shading. B roof T4 applies there. And in fact, if there was a roof on top of that building, the roof would be B roof T4 as well. Because if you can remember, these regulations are concerned with extend ex, external, sorry, fire performance and, and propagation, essentially. So there are some areas of the regulations which are concerned with the internal spread of flame. And like I said, generally, we don't get involved in that. But one area that you need to be mindful of is what approved document B and the Scottish Technical Handbook say about the junction of compartment walls, because you need to be careful in these instances with what deck type is being used and also the fire performance of the roof system on top. Not a problem with ours, like I said, everything is B roof T4, but if you're using anything that isn't, then that would be a problem in these areas. Also, subject to the building height and the building use, it might be that you need to use a non-combustible deck type. So that might be that you couldn't use um, timber, for example. There is what's called a special application for purpose groups, residential dwellings, residential other offices, um, assembly and recreation, where if the roof is not more than 15 metres, it allows materials rated class B3 uh, sorry, B, S3, D2 or worse, that's timber, plywood or OSB, as a deck um, to the uh, roof covering the roof system. So what does that mean in summary? What that basically means is that flat roofs achieving B roof T4 that are on a concrete or metal deck will comply with the regulations. Flat roofs achieving B roof T4 that are on a timber deck could meet the special application requirement if the roof is less than 15 metres and subject to uh, you know, the building use. If the flat roof is not one of the three purpose groups or is above 15 metres in height, the deck would need to be a suitable non-combustible material for at least 1.5 metres either side of that um, compartment wall. One alternative solution to satisfying this regulation is to extend the roof through the roof system by at least um, 375 millimetres. Just a little bit about insurance as well, because I've spoken a lot about the regulations. We are seeing increasingly that insurers are looking for non-combustible insulation in roof systems. So that's... Um, irrespective of the B root T4 classification. That's because they're obviously in, uh, concerned with um, protecting the building fabric as well. Also, we see factory mutual being used as a, a standard. And um, we always encourage our area technical managers to ask the question as early as they possibly can. Is there any reason regulator insurance or otherwise? Because we aren't always privy to all the information. We don't always see um, detailed drawings. We don't always know the building height, um, even when being even when we're being asked for specification. Um, we want them to ask: Is there any requirement for non-combustible insulation on that project? Because we have a solution. We have Seekathern mineral wool, which is non-combustible, and we would always encourage anybody to check anything that we're providing or or supplying with regards to specification or with regards to information, that that gets checked by the fire safety officer, fire engineer, fundamentally the person who has the ultimate responsibility for satisfying the, the regulations. So I hope that we're demonstrating that we are acting as you might expect Seeker to act. We're acting like a market leader. We're trying to do the right thing. But I want to make it clear that 
we're not LABC, we're not um, the government, we don't make the regulations, we don't enforce the regulations, we're simply trying to help. And we obviously want people to use our systems with confidence, and we don't want people to ask us every five minutes, if you like, well, I've got this and I've changed this, will it do this, will it do that? We wanted to be in that position where we could say categorically, doesn't really matter, it's all B root T4. And actually, we have no obligation to test any of our systems. Um, but I just wanted to um, summarise really that XApps provide an excellent opportunity for manufacturers like us to provide this assurance that people want and I think are all within their rights to expect. And they provide the means to essentially meet the requirements of the building regulations. So what I'm going to do now is hand you back over to Tim, who will expand a little, uh, expand sorry, a little bit more on the um, systems that we do have tested and uh, classified to be routine for. Thank you. Sorry for that slight technical issue, but thanks, Dean, for your comprehensive um, presentation. Uh, so it's clear now that we have test certification from third-party test body Warrington Fire that confirms any Sarnafil PVC single ply membranes with 50 millimeter and over PIR insulation on steel, timber, and plywood at any degree of pitch under 70 degrees achieves B root T4. To the best of my knowledge, no one else has this. We have very nearly completed the same on all of our roofing systems. I'll now pass you over to Tom, who will be reading out any questions you have submitted throughout the presentation. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Tim. Um, yeah, I can see that we've already had some questions already, uh, but if you obviously if you miss the start of the presentation, you can put some questions in in the Q&A box at the bottom of the right hand screen at the bottom of the, the screen. I'll just read out some questions now what we've already got. OK, so this one's for you, uh, Dean, I think these questions. Can I get access to the evidence documents for your systems? Yeah, 100 percent. As I said earlier on, we're totally transparent with those. All you need to do is provide us some contact details and we'll provide you everything that we have. All of the test reports, we, we make them readily available. We don't uh, limit the information or doctor it in any shape or form. You'll get exactly what we get from uh, Warrington Fire. Thanks, Dave. And another one is when will you have testing on your obvious systems? Yeah, very, very soon. Um, as I've said, unfortunately, there are only two test bodies who can conduct uh, who can conduct 1187 uh, testing in Europe. And um, unfortunately, we, we have been sort of serious. This our program has been seriously disrupted by um, Brexit and, and by COVID. We've, we've lost a lot of time. Unfortunately, there were times when our facilities weren't open um, during isolation, uh, uh, the lockdowns and so on, um, ditto the test bodies. But um, yeah, very, very soon. Um, and as soon as we have that, we'll, um, we'll announce it and make all of the information readily available. Great, no problem. And let me have a look at one more. I've got another one here, second. So if anyone would like to discuss the project, can they get in touch? 100%. Yep. Yep. Just get in touch. However, email, phone. Yep. Just, um, just get in touch and, um, I'll, I'll, I'll help. No problem. Okay. 
So thanks for all your questions, everyone. Like I said, if you do have any more um, and you didn't have time to put it in the chat, then uh, you can obviously get in touch with uh, Tim or Dean after this, where the contact details are here. So just feel free to email them um, and get in touch with themselves. Um, obviously, we hope you all enjoyed the webinar today. Uh, so you can do have an on-demand webinar section online where you can view all of our previous webinars, including this one, which will be added in due course. Feel free to visit the Seeker Knowledge section on the Seeker website and take a look at our wide range of webinars. Thanks for your time, everyone. We hope you find the webinar really useful. Uh, that's all from the Seeker team today, and goodbye. Thank you.